His life-changing decision to follow Christ put his life in extreme danger because of the cultural and religious implications within his family. Facing the threat of death for his faith, Nadullah was forced to leave Syria and seek refuge in Lebanon. However, danger persisted. Stay tuned and be inspired as you hear the entirety of his story. Well, hi friends, welcome to the Everlasting Love Program. I'm your host, Barbara Carpuzian, and as always, we're so glad that you decided to join us. You know, the title of our show is Everlasting Love, which comes from the scripture in, in uh, Jeremiah 31, 3, and it says, the Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. And our goal on this program, and we hope that we're doing it well, is to really demonstrate the transforming love of God in a person's life. Our, our goal on this program is for individuals to uh, share their stories. The Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And people's stories are powerful. And so we hope that as you watch these shows, that you are hearing that, not just with your natural ears, but with your spiritual ears, the power of God's love to change a person's life. And my experience has been is that he is the only one that can do that. We are talking about the king of the universe. We are talking about Jesus Christ who came to this world as a man and willingly laid down his life. Think about that. Who would be willing to lay down their life for you? It has to be someone who unconditionally loves you he was willing to lay down his life and to take upon himself all of the filth all of the sin all of the darkness all of the ugliness of this world of our sinful nature upon his back because he was perfect he was willing to be to to be the price to pay the the, the price for us so that we could spend eternity with him because you know god is holy god is perfect and imperfection cannot dwell with perfection but for those of us who simply accept jesus christ as our lord and savior i mean think about it it's not about you having to do all this stuff to earn God's love or to earn passage into eternity. It's simply by accepting him as your Lord and Savior, believing what he did on that cross. And when you do that and say, I believe that, I believe that you're God, that you died for me, and that my sins, my shortcomings, my weaknesses are now covered and I can spend eternity with you because not only did you die, but on the third day you rose again. It's as simple as that. And then once you do that, you need to get connected to a good church. You need to uh, begin a journey of discipleship so that you can read his word because his word is alive and it will minister to you. And so as you're watching the program, you're gonna see some information come up on the screen. Facebook page, YouTube channel, we're also on Instagram, different ways that you can connect with us if you're looking for someone to pray with you or even perhaps guide you to a church or to a Bible study, we'd love to hear from you. So without further ado, I wanna introduce um, 
my guest to you. And as you heard at the top of the program, this is going to be a compelling story. And so I want to welcome uh, Nadella Araju. Did I say that right, Nadella? Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to welcome this millennial <laughs> to the program who has an amazing story. I've heard it a few times, and I'm still processing it. So welcome, Nadella. Thank you. Um, you'll see that Nadella has a ministry called Voice of Faith, and his website is going to come up, and um, you'll be able to get uh, additional information about him. So Nadella, I just want you to just start by telling us your story. Okay, that's great. I'm happy to share God's story. Hello everyone, my name is Nadalla Arraju. I'm from Syria. My story started 33 years ago when my father as Islamic uh, radical leader and as a tribe leader came to Allah, the God of Islam, asking for a child. Mm -hmm. And after a few months, like 18, 16 months, I came to this world with no idea, just like any other child. And at the age of three, I went to the mosque, the place of worship for Muslims to learn about the religion. Because from the age of six, I started counting my good and bad works on myself. So I learned everything. And one of the things like when someone die, everything is done. Nothing will happen again. But the age of six, I heard for the first time, someone is named Jesus Christ, risen from the grief. This has happened because one of the Christian witnesses shared that with my cousin. And my cousin came talk with his other friend, say, hey, don't talk with this infidel guy because he's talking about Jesus. He rose from the grave. I was six years old, laying in mud and just looking. He is God. And the answer it was slap. And he said, get out from here, go to your home. So I went home. So you mean that individual slapped you? Yes. But you still heard at six years old that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he rose from the dead. Yes. Because you were told that after you die, there's nothingness. Yes. Right? right? Okay. Right. And then you also said that you're, that in, 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 your, in the faith of Islam that they would weigh your good, your good and your bad on, a, on scales? Yes. So in other words, you would, what would happen like if you have more good than bad? If you have more good and your scales like you're going to paradise, but if you have bad, you're going to hell okay. for a few years. And after that, you convert to go to the paradise. Okay. All right. Just yeah. wanted to get clarity on that. Yeah. Okay. So I went home after that slab asking my mom, my mom, just a poor woman. She didn't know how to read or write. And she said, ask your dad. And here I'm in trouble. Because my dad, like a police officer at home, he's a tribe leader, like a, like a king for the tribe. And everyone coming to him asking for money, for wisdom, for help. So I cannot ask him because I know he's going to like slap me again. So I start asking those people, like coming to him to ask for help. And after a while, someone told him, your son is asking a shame question. Mm. Come here, son. Why are you asking this question? Just I want to know. You don't have to know. I just want to know about this guy who rose from the grave. You don't want to know. And he slapped me. And he said, don't ask again. Yes, sir. I will not ask again. Five minutes later, I asked again. <laughs> who is Jesus? Why he rose from the grave? Just I want to know about that. Maybe if they just told me anything, like I will accept it as a child. But this is started like this is continued for almost three, four months. And after like uh, that, my family decided to send me to Islamic residential school. They taught me Sharia Allah, as me like the Islamic theology. They taught me to do the call of a prayer, to do the five prayers every day, to explain the Quran and everything. I learned all that thing, but you know, that for me, not just to start as an Islamic residential school, because this is my like horrible life. Because uh, as a child, I've been like nine months, uh, a year away from my family, sleeping in somewhere I don't like, like the teachers, they was, like having a bad attitude for every child and kidnap some of the children because they are away from their families. And a lot of things happen. And at the age of eight, I learned how to kill someone with a smile in my face because later on, I gonna do the jihad, the holy war of Muslims with the infidels, like with the Christian and Jewish. And this is just gave me more like uh, 
bad dreams, nightmares, every night like I'm dreaming and blood and all that things. So wait, what? tell tell the audience what you mean by jihad. Jihad, it is the holy war for Muslims, for uh, fighting non-Muslims, like Jewish, Christian, even the other kind of Muslims, like the Sunni fighting Shia and Shia fighting Sunni. So you mean like killing them? Yes, okay, killing them. All right. Yeah, so I learned how to cut someone's head, sorry to say that, at eight years old, yes, you learned how to decapitate uh, someone's head. Yeah, with a smile in my face. With a, ooh. Because I'm serving Allah. I'm serving the God of Islam in this way. So uh, that caused me a lot of bad things. One of them like nightmares. The other thing I cannot smile because like everything is bad. And my face like just turned to be dark. I don't like anything, whatever happened in my face. Okay, that's normal for me. So I continued that uh, uh, the religion study until the age of 13 and six months. I graduated from that school as a Muslim leader, full educated, but zero faith. I went back to my home with my family at the age of 13, six months, and uh, my father built a mosque, a place of worship for Muslims. And he said, okay, you're gonna lead that place. So I was preaching in that place, and I was uh, like everyone crying because like a little boy is preaching, but for me like, Something I learned how to do. I you don't were believe 13 in. at the time. Yes, 13 at the time. And I do the five prayers. I do the call for prayers for the five times. And all that thing happened. But in this time, my father, he had like a th a three wives and 18 uh, children. And Whoa. I started... Uh, <laughs> three wives. Yeah, this is normal because they are allowed to have four wives. Okay. So in that time, I started hearing something like unusual. A voice in my head saying, Nadalla, go to Lebanon. I'm thinking, am I crazy? Like something talking in my head? Like whatever happened? Like what's happening? So I start not sleeping at the night because I thought someone like on the roof, something, someone like behind the window or like someone trying to joke with me. But when I'm sleeping on the day, a clear and strong voice saying, Nadalla, go to Lebanon. Mm. So... I got money from my dad because he's a business guy and he's the king for the tribe. And uh, what tribe? You keep make, saying tribe. Like, yeah. like what do you mean by that? Tribe is a clan. Oh, like a clan. Yes. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. So I got the money. I made the fake documents because I was underage, and this is easy. And I moved to Lebanon. So after I moved to Lebanon, there is nothing in Lebanon because everything like normal. No voice anymore, nothing happening. And I just like, as a, a teenagers, went from the out of the box of the tribe, I just starting the sinful party life. So they, at 13 years old, they just let you go? They don't know. I just like sneak out oh, of the home. Oh, you snuck out. But, yeah. but, he, but he gave you money. Yes. To buy a motorcycle. Yeah, because I'm like a prince for for oh, my dad, like and for okay. the clan, like I'm I'm like, like a, prince. a prince. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I can have whatever I want. Hmm. So uh, in Lebanon, nothing happened. Starting that sinful party life, and I thought this is the happiness: alcohol, drugs, uh, smoking, girls, all that thing. But this thing giving me like a happiness for really short time, two or three mm. hours after that going home with a depression. Mm. I cannot sleep at the night because I'm scared. Like if I die, I know where I'm going because my bed works day by day, day by day, same thing. And nothing like filling my heart because there's a dark place in my heart looking for a happiness. This is short time. I'm not working because as a prince, my family is sending me a money and I'm just like living my life in routine day by day. And I decided like I will end my life. Mm. So I was walking on the street in Lebanon in 2008, at 20 of August, 2008. You remember it, the date and everything. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, and I found a piece of paper on the floor and it was a, like a testimony for someone came from a Muslim background. A testimony. Yes. Okay. I read it and everything. And he said like the Lord Jesus Christ will bless you. I threw it away. I know Allah, uh, Muhammad the prophet, Abraham, Moses, all that things. And someone uh, knew his name, Jesus, and I said, God, you're just a illusion. You're not real. And I cannot believe in you. Mm. And from August 20, 2008 till August 31, it was the most depression days in my life. Mm. And I said, okay, now is the time. I will end my life. In August 31, I went to my bedroom, 
I closed the door and I locked the window and started talking bad words to God. And I remember something from that piece of paper. He said, the living and true God. The living and true God. Wow. And it was like 2 a.m. And I said, Lord, if you are real, living and true, like what this guy saying, I want to know you. But if you are the Allah of Islam, I cannot believe in you. I know how much you are hard and evil and harsh. And I know everything about you. And you are just an illusion. But if you are real, true and living, I want to know you. I need a relationship with you. That time everything is locked. But uh, there is a guy with a very strong light in his face. The, 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 the light is strong but didn't hurt my eyes. He giving me his hand and he said, Nadalla, I'm the way and the truth and the life. He's real. It's not a dream. It's not a vision. He's real. He took my hand. He took my right hand for 15 mm -hmm. seconds. He gone, but tons of heavy weights gone from my shoulders. Wow. You know, every night I'm scared to sleep. Maybe I'm going to die. But this night I slept from 2.30 a.m. till the next day, 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. Usually I woke up with a strong Arabic coffee with a cigarette talking bad words from the Pelicone to the people who's walking on the street. Everything black and white. But this time, when I woke up, like I don't have a desire to have a, a, like a cigarette. I don't have a desire to talk with the girls. And I just went out to the balcony and I found, oh my God, is everything is in you. Wow. Everything colorful. Buildings, nature, birds, people like on the street. I want to jump down to tell them what happened with me. Wow. That makes me think of the scripture that says that he makes all things new yes. and that you're a new creature in Christ. Old Amen. things have passed away and all things have become new. So that is so powerful because you were going to take your life. You thought, you know, this is happiness with mm -hmm. drugs and girls and some, all this stuff. Found out that it wasn't. You were in this period of, of severe depression, yes. made a decision to take your life and all you did was call on him. Yes. And I just want people to hear that because the that's what the Bible says. It says, call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. That's it. And you did. And he revealed himself to you. And in your case, it was pretty, I mean, he physically appeared to you. You saw, you, you saw the light, you held his hand, and he spoke to you. Yes. Wow. Like, really, it's a new life a new creation because yes. everything is in you yeah and that time I want to jump down to tell everyone what happened with me but even myself I don't know what happened with me so I grab the laptop start searching for the way and the truth and the life first time in my life I'm hearing that words when I start searching for that I found a Christian website in Arabic because I was speaking just Arabic in that time and they told me this is Jesus Christ I told them listen I'm a Muslim. Can I find him in the Quran, the Holy Book of Muslims? Say, no, if you want to know Jesus, you have to read the New Testament mm. to know about Jesus. So they sent me the PDF and I start like reading the Bible until I found like in John uh, chapter 14, verse 6, I'm the way and the truth and the life. Wow. I, I, and I just want people to hear that too because the fact that Jesus said that because nobody else has ever said that yes so he that was so specific to who to his identity yes. that I am the way the truth, truth and, and the, the life way. so you start reading this Bible you get this revelation you read the scripture in John yeah and I rose my hands and I said Lord I'm yours Whatever happened for me, whatever the price, because I know what that will cost mm -hmm. me my life. I know what that cost for that following. Said, whatever happened, I'm yours. Wow. I believe in you. Mm -hmm. So I went back to the chat box. That days it was just the chat box. Chat the, box. <laughs> yeah, on the website. And I told them, I believe in Jesus. What should I do? They called me. I repent. I give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And everything is changed. You know, the people around me looking, my face is changing from dark to white. I'm not talking the bad words. I'm not going with the girls. I'm not smoking, no drinking. They ask me, Nadala, are you sick? <laughs> Something happened with you? <laughs> Tell us, like, don't hide it. I just told them God is working my life and they don't understand that. And I cannot tell them what happened yeah. because I don't know how to explain that to them. Mm -hmm. So with the website, I start with them a discipleship because this is what was like important for me to feed me spiritually. 
and I start like a prayer meeting three th uh, three days a week. Like we sitting on the phone about like three hours every time, and mm. I'm growing in my relationship with the Lord. Everything changing in me, and now it is time after three months to find a church. Say, Nadallah, it is your time to find a church. Okay, I start searching for churches every time. Hello, this is Nadalla Raju. I would love to come to the church. This is what happened with me. Your father is Rafi, the tribe leader. Yes. So we will call you later. They block him my number because oh. they scared to have someone from a Muslim background in the church. Wow. Because it was like yeah. a history behind that. Your father I'm, had a history, and yeah. so they were kind of they were afraid actually. Yeah. yeah. He gonna destroy the church or mm -hmm. he gonna kill a people because mm -hmm. you know. He have like a power. So yeah, uh, yeah. after that, like I just say, like after 30 churches, maybe they just prayed and I will not call again any churches. You know, the YouTube, it was just starting in that time. I start mm. like on the YouTube, find like worship, find some people preaching on the YouTube, growing mm -hmm. in my faith. And after about a year, like a year and a half, I found a church on March 10th on 2010. The first time I went to a church in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And in the church, they said, not allow to find the Lord call you for ministry. No, I just want to be a regular believer. I don't want to do <laughs> ministry. But you're speaking with everyone about how the Lord like came to your life and how you changed your life. I would love to share with the people. I want to be a witness for Jesus Christ, but I don't want to be a minister. So, but from the other side, my uh, cousin, they find like I'm going every Wednesday and Sunday and they don't know where I'm going. And they asked me the first time, and I cannot hide it. I told them, I'm going to the church because the Lord changed my life. Mm. The first time they ignored it. The second time they ignored it. The third time they told my father, your son became an infidel because he said, like, I'm going to the church and I believe in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Over the phone, he said, his blood is free. Kill him. His blood is free? And kill him. And kill him. Oh, man. This is your father. This is my father mm. because he's... He's a leader in the religion, and same time he's a tribe leader. For the religion, mm -hmm. they have to kill me. And for the tribe, this is shame, and they have to claim the shame in my blood. So, so that's the reason, because my, my question w is, okay, maybe they don't believe or accept you know, your, your faith, your Christian faith. Um, okay, fine, but then why they, do they have to kill you? Why can't yes. they just let you live in your Christian faith? But you're sh saying it's because it brings shame yes. to and them. They have an order from the Quran to kill everyone who converts to Christianity or any other religion. Yeah, and I, and I wanted to go back on something because I, I, the audience, if you, you heard, you know, he said, I give my life to Jesus and I don't care what the cost is. I, I know there's gonna be a price, but I, I don't care. And I think that that's very important for people who say, oh, sometimes people, they become Christians, it's like a handicap. Yes. They, they, they need, you know, they need some kind of spiritual something. Yes. But you, you were saying, this is, I'm, I know this is so real that whatever the price is, I'm willing right yeah. so now here's your father there's a bounty yeah. on your head yeah. yeah so I'm like I'm a target they looking to finish me I run away I told the church what happened with me I went to a safe place and I start going to school and same time my father he sent nine people to to looking for me full time they paid and they just looking for me to to clean that shame for the tribe and for the religion and uh, from 2010 till 2015, I had like 22 attempts from them trying to kill me. Ooh, 22 attempts. And 18 sign in my body from a knife or something. You have sharp. 18 scars on your body. Yes, and a disability in my right foot because they smashed with the, with the hammer trying to, to smash my head and I moved and they smashed my right foot. And yeah, I and I noticed that you're, you, you still limp until today. Yes. Wow, wow. Whew, I have to take a breath here. <laughs> so yeah, so then what happens? You know, and all that things like I'm just to glor uh, uh, glorify the Lord because I know whatever they do, 
like they will not take my eternal life because I had the experience of the darkness when I was a Muslim. Now I have the experience with the Lord and new creation, and I have the the experience in the light. And my relationship with the Lord is growing. In same time, like I'm I'm a witness for the Lord because I used to go to the school, but I cannot close my mouth on the public transportation. I'm sharing the gospel with the Muslims, telling them who Jesus Christ, what He can do, hmm. and I plant seven home churches through through the public transportation. Seven home churches. Yes, because those people cannot go to the church because if their family found out, they're going to finish them. Mm -hmm. So bringing someone from the church to teach them, doing a Bible study, preaching for them. Mm -hmm. And after a while, the Lord closed all the doors and one door still open. It is the ministry door. So I joined the church on the staff to be a minister with them. Ah, you didn't mm. want to, right? I don't want to. I want to be a regular <laughs> believer. Like, I don't want to be a minister, but the Lord opened the, he closed all the doors, and one door is still open, the ministry. So I went to seminary, and same time I start planting churches. I planted a church in North Lebanon. Like, the last church was planted in 1974, and during the civil war in Lebanon. But there is no other new churches. And the Lord blessed me to go there to plant a church in North mm. Lebanon and to see like how the people hungry for the gospel. Hungry, they are yes. thirsty for the gospel. Yeah, Start wow. sharing the gospel with them. And one day we baptized 300 people and this is, was an attack in the devil home. So they attacked me three times. I went to the hospital. And that time I signed a, like a legal paper with the government. I cannot go back to this city. Mm. And I went back to South Lebanon to help another uh, uh, ex-Muslim believer to share the gospel with the Muslims in South Lebanon. We planned the church there. And after that, the Lord called me to go back to the capital city of Lebanon, Beirut, start sharing the gospel. In that time, my older brother, he used to come to Lebanon to kill me because they cannot find me. And he said, I will go and I will gonna find him and clean the shame of the family, of the tribe, and the mm. religion. So now you're, they're sent your brother to kill you. Yes, because he will be in honor, he's gonna <sighs> do that. Mm. So in that time, it was a political problem between the Syrian government and the Lebanese government, and they closed the border for a couple of days. And he went back home and said, I didn't do it. But he started calling me and threatening, I will come and I will end your life. And I told him, if you're gonna kill me, I will be with the Lord, but how about you? And he thought like I'm acting and I'm just like as a new creation in Jesus Christ, just sharing with him the love of Jesus. And he said, listen, something wrong. I will call you later. <laughs> and he starts calling every day, asking questions. Wow. And so are you the youngest of three brothers? I'm the, the middle because. The, oh, you're yeah. the middle. Okay. We, are, we are nine. <laughs> There's nine of you. Oh, yes. so you're in the middle somewhere. Okay. Yes. So he starts calling you on a yeah. regular basis. Okay. He starts calling and asking questions about my new faith. And after three months, he said, I cannot pray the Islamic prayer. I want to know more about Jesus. Come I sent him the, the new, <laughs> wow. a new Testament. And he starts reading the New Testament. And he became a believer. But in 29th of July, 2014, he went to be with the Lord. How old was he? He was 22 years old. So he was a baby. So what yeah. happened? My father found out he's a believer and he just got his gun. And he shot him? Shot him. He went to be right away <sighs> to be home with the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. One day we're going to see him with the Lord. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So and this is like, it was kind for me. It is hard, but in the same time, encouraging me to share the gospel more. Mm. Because the kingdom is darkness is like strong and evil. And we need to show them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I just continue my ministry. I plant another church in the capital city of Lebanon, Beirut. And helping my uh, mother's church like in teaching and everything. And after that, in 2018, the Lord opened the door for me to move to Canada. Mm. So I moved to Canada. And I started planting churches with the Arab and Muslim people in the GT area of Toronto. And same time I got married for my lovely wife, Rachel. And uh, this time we find the Lord like just call us to do an online ministry. And we start Voice of Faith online ministry, mm. reaching the gospel for the Arab and Muslim people in all over the Middle East mm -hmm. and all over the world, because there's a lot of Arab in many different countries, mm -hmm. including US, Canada, Europe, so start sharing the gospel with them. We see the people asking about the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And now on our website, more than 3.7 million come into the website every month. And more than a 20 believer every, every month come into the Lord from a Muslim background, asking about Jesus Christ. And they being like a new creation, as I just became a new creation. 3.7 million. Every month. That's incredible. And, you're say, and you said like 20 believers per month yes. are accepting Jesus. Yes. That's incredible, Nadola. Wow. That is incredible. Come on, tell, me, tell us more. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of that. Uh, uh, every month you find like 20 to 25 sometimes, like last month, 32 uh, new believers from a Muslim background. There's a lot of story how the Lord working in the Muslim world, especially in the Middle East, because they are thirsty for the, the living word of God. We're sharing the gospel with them. And you know, as a Christian, we're living here in the West, we say like just, oh, this is simple thing. But mm. for them, like, this is rich, this is life, and the Lord working mm. in their heart. Mm. And you know, and I just found, like, lately I became addicted to, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. If I'm working, if I'm doing anything, I cannot, like, stop. I cannot, like, close my mouth to not sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because this is my goal in the life, sharing mm. the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's a lot of story, like, from those who became a believer. Well, let, tell us a story. You know, there's yeah. a story for, I cannot share two stories. Yeah. And there's a story for a young guy, and uh, he became a believer. And after talking three months and about his sinful life and how Jesus Christ will give him a new life. And when we was like talking together, and he said, give me 10 minutes. And he want to take a shower. And he said, Lord, I clean my body, but you are the only one who can clean my heart and make me a new creation. So after that, we prayed. He's one of the leaders in one close country in the Middle East. The other one, it was, uh, this is for a family story, but it started with a young guy, 23 years old. He was a student in the University of Toronto, and he saw my testimony online, and he said, okay, I want to show him. He don't know anything about the Quran. After like nine months, like talking together, he became a believer. His, his grandfather killed in Iraq 2004 because he was with the Qaeda as an Islamic militia. His mom is a Quran teacher. Mm. So after he graduated from the university, he went back. And his mom find like, this guy, he's not doing the, the traditional thing for the religion. I gonna like tell his father, but as a mom, my, maybe like his father will kill him. But like my heart is like, my heart is like really hurting me if his father killing him. But as a religion teacher, I gonna tell his father to see what gonna he will do with him. So she came to her son and she said, I found the gospel in your phone. He said, I believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. And she said, who gonna deceive you in this? Who will, who did de deceiving you in this uh, thing? And he said, no one deceiving you, me, but if you want to know about that, talk with this guy because he was a Sharia Allah student. So I had about like 11 months conversation with her daily, about like two hours, and she became a believer. Oh. <laughs> so, and I talked with his dad and he became a believer. Look at that. But the mom don't know like uh, her husband is a believer. She know just like her son is a believer. Oh no. <laughs> so I went there, they are in very close country in the Middle East, they cannot share the country. And I went there to make a baptism for them. And, uh, she told her husband that I'm going to go to meet my sister. And he said, I'm going with my son to meet like a friend. Ended up on the same house. That's, and they just surprised. That's incredible. <laughs> like, so the husband didn't know the wife was a believer. The yeah, wife didn't know yes. the husband. But yet they end up in the same house and yes. the whole family now is saved. Yeah. And after two months from that <laughs> baptism, we started the second home church in their house. And they're sharing the gospel with everyone. They are really close country. And maybe someone will kill them right away if they're sharing about Jesus mm. Christ. But they just keep sharing with their neighbors, with their relatives. And three of their relatives, they became a believer. Like just the last three, four months. Mm. You know, I think about the West. We have access to so much. Um, it's, you know, Christianity is, is kind of ingrained in our history. And, um, and it's, it's been influential in so many sectors of um, of our culture, whether it's you know education or the arts or music, whatever, right? Um, 
And I think that um, sometimes we take that for granted. Yeah. Uh, and I'm listening to you, and here are people who know that they could lose their life. And so I think this really, this really um, tells us that the gospel is true, yes. right? Because why would you risk all of that for something that's a lie? Yes. Right? Yeah, you know, uh, last 10 months, I had two dear brothers. They want to be with the Lord because they killed one killed by his friends because he's a believer in Jesus Christ and he's from a Muslim background and one killed by his older brother and his father. And you know, uh, here in the West, we just say, oh, we know all that things. But there, there, there is like some people giving their life as a cause to following Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we are here, we just saying like, oh, I will share the gospel tomorrow or after a few years. Yeah. We have like maybe work colleague or friends for 10, 15 years, we don't share the gospel with them. Yeah. I'm sorry to say that, but Christian, my brothers and sisters in the West, shame on you not sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. with everyone. Mm -hmm. Shame on you, you are not a salt for the, the people who is like around you. You need to be a witness, life witness about Jesus Christ mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. Start with a salty speech. Start to be your life, to be a gospel for your friends. If you mm -hmm. open your, your front door, you're gonna find in your neighborhood, there's more than three, four nations from like different places in the world. They are not a believers. They don't know about Jesus Christ. Maybe they didn't heard about Jesus Christ. Be the first one sharing the gospel with them. Yeah, that's so good. So I want to ask you this question, Nadala. Um, I want to bring up the topic of forgiveness. Yeah. Um, and how, as a Muslim, when you you know when when you were practicing Muslim, the view around that, and then you know what what the view is as a Christian, and how uh, you have approached that in your life. Because here you are, yeah. thirty one years old have a limp that you're, um, you know, be, because of, of an attempt to kill you. And, um, and, and I've witnessed it. I know that you deal with pain and right now there doesn't appear to be a medical solution for it. Um, how do you talk about the topic of forgiveness? Yeah. You know, uh, first three years in my faith, I was struggling. Struggling because the word of God is teaching about forgiveness. And from my previous background, like I have the power, I will not forgive anyone. I need my right. I have to take my right, even if killing someone. And the th uh, first three years in my faith, I had written a plan to kill my father and nine other people. And everyone, I planned how to kill him and what time and where and all that things. But for three months, I'm struggling. I cannot forgive them. And the teaching in the church, it was about forgiveness. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, I cannot sleep because like I cannot forgive them. I know what the word of God teaching, but I want to do my own will, not the will of God. But one time I came praying and said, Lord, if you didn't give me the spirit of forgiveness, I cannot forgive them. I cannot forgive them. I cannot forget what they're doing. And I was praying and crying and I found that something came like, the Lord took all the hurt from my heart. Mm -hmm. And I, I burned out the, the, the written plan. And I said, Lord, I give them to you. You know, from that night, I remember I started praying for them to know the Lord, not to killing them and end their mm. life. So is anyone else in your family? So you said there are nine, right? Yeah. Is anyone else in your family a believer? And how, what, what kind of contact do you have? What does your relationship look like with any of your family members you know, today? My, my cousin became a believer before even my brother and he killed. They followed him to the north of Iraq and they killed him. So your cousin was killed yes. also? My cousin, my older brother, and there is no any other contact in the family that time until just two years ago I started to have a contact with my mom because she divorced with my father because like he, like my older brother killed because he's like an infidel in their views. They want to kill me because I became a Christian. My second older brother killed because he's with Islamic militia. He used to do the jihad, the, the holy war. And my mom said like, because Allah is not fair what he's doing, he, they want to kill two of my sons because they are non-Muslims anymore. Mm -hmm. And already they killed my older brother. And they, the second old one killed because he's fighting for Islam. Allah is not real. Allah is not fair. Allah mm -hmm. is not, he's just an illusion. 
and she don't believe in God. We have like calls sometimes, but uh, I cannot talk about the Lord with her, mm. with her because when I'm telling her about the Lord, she just right away ending the the call. Mm. Wow. So I want to I want to um, you know as, as I've been listening to you and learning a little bit more. It's interesting that when you were eight years old, you learned how to decapitate a human being and that a, a way to pacify God or to worship God was to take kill infidels. And because somebody would say, yeah, some, a person is even willing to kill, to take their own lives, like do a suicide killing, knowing that they will take other people out like, like a person who commits jihad, right? Like they might do a suicide bombing knowing that they're gonna kill other people. But yet in Christianity, it's completely different where we're saying, you know, we're willing to lay down our lives if it means that somebody else can receive life. Like, yeah. I, I just want you to talk about that uh, that contrast yeah. right there, yeah. You know, because in the other religions, we have to do works. Works, yeah. We have to do works. We have to do flash thing. We have to do a practice. We have to do uh, uh, like a traditional thing for the religion to obey their God. But in Christianity, because God is not working from other works, like God is working in our heart. He's changing the heart. You know, in all the religions talking about like, we don't like someone because he's not like us. But in, real, in Christianity, because the Lord changing the heart, we like everyone because mm. God is loving everyone. And when we show the love of God for the people, they became a Christian because this is first time for them to explain that love. And many people like asking me, why you love us? You don't know us. I just told them, because God is loves you. Mm. And they said, in our religion, we have to do one, two, three, four. And just said, just give your heart to Jesus Christ. You can see how he can change you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because you, in, in, in other re religions, it requires works, yeah. right? And then with Christianity, it's by grace. And when you, when he does this, when he changes your life, you're compelled to do works. Yeah. But it's not your works that give that 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 get you favor with him yeah. it's the fact that you simply accepted what he did for you as opposed to other some other religions that require works because how do you know how many works you have to do <laughs> to get his favor yeah. right yeah it's interesting yes it is like even i told some of my friends like are you still counting down what your works and they said why you didn't count your works? I said, because like my works is a fruit about my faith. Mm. This is, it came like natural from my heart because I love the Lord. I worship the Lord. My heart is the Lord. And uh, the works is the fruit of my faith. Mm. It's not like the initial of my faith. Mm. That's so good. So talk about the voice of faith, right? Because this is a ministry. I know you talked about it a little that you started this ministry. 3.7 million people every month. People are, are coming to the Lord. But what does, what does voice of faith look like? Your model, your programming? So uh, voice of faith, it is an online radio. It's a website and we have social media. And we have people contact us through the messages, through WhatsApp, through email. We share the gospel with them. You know, since we started Voice of Faith until now, we plant nine home churches in four different countries, and all of them like radical Muslims in these countries. Mm. And every month we have more than like 800, sometimes to 1,200 conversation with people and showing how much they are like, they have a Thursday about the, to know about your Christianity. So Voice of Faith, just an online platform sharing Jesus Christ with the Arab and Muslim people and our goal to reach this uh, nation to to share the gospel with them you know we see them come on here in u.s canada europe but they came with an agenda we're just trying to share the gospel with them in their countries and we just encourage them to stay in their countries to mm. be a missionary for their mm. community mm -hmm. and our goal by god grace and voice of faith for the next uh, 20 years to reach uh, 20 percent from the population of five biggest like Muslim countries in the Middle East, mm -hmm. the radical five radical uh, countries in the Middle East. Wow, where they actually oppress Christianity. Yes. 
And, you know, it, it's amazing that the gospel continues to proliferate itself yes. and, and, uh, and multiply because the Bible says God loved the world, Amen. you know, both the sons of Isaac and the sons of Ishmael, right? That he loves the world. And it seems like there's, there's momentum uh, among the Islamic people where, you know, Jesus is revealing himself because I've heard stories of people having dreams and, um, and, and he's really revealing himself. Do you see that happening? Yeah, especially in the last seven, eight years, I see people come like, I saw a dream. I had to explain that dream for me. I had a vision. A lot of people come and say like, I saw Jesus. Jesus came to me and he said that and that. A lot of people come and saying like, I had a dream and someone came to me with a peaceful and strong voice said, I'm Jesus Christ. Mm. I need you. I choose you. Yeah. 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 I, what I would like for you to do, um, and I know you speak, read, write Arabic fluently, uh, and I thank you for doing this in, 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 a di in your second language, or maybe it's your third language. Um, but I would love for you, because we have listeners uh, from, from everywhere, viewers from everywhere, um, you know, that watch this program. And I shared the gospel at the beginning of the program in English. Um, I would love for you to just take a, a couple of minutes to share the gospel in Arabic and to pray for the people. And I believe you can look in the camera over there. <laughs> I think that's the right place. But would you do that, Nadullah? Yes, for yes. sure. Yeah, yeah. Azizi al Muslim al Arabi wal Muslim, Ana Adouk in Nutarif al Messiah Yesua. ممكن انت سمعت عن المنجي ممكن سمعت عن الشافي yeah, go ahead. Keep going. Yeah. <تصفيق> ممكن سمعت عن المنجي ممكن سمعت عن الشافي ممكن اول مره بتسمع عن المسيح اللي يغفر الذنوب والخطايا انا ادعوك حتى تتعرف عليه كمنجي لحياتك يغفر حياتك ممكن نحن كل يوم بنقول نحن نعمل اعمال صالحه ممكن كل يوم بتكون انت تصلي خمس صلوات ممكن كل يوم تحاول تعطي زكاة وتعطي فلوس للناس لحتى تكون اعمالك الصالحة لكن انا ادعوك حتى تعرف المسيح المنجي هو يريد قلبك ما بيريد اعمالك ما بيريد اعمالك الصالحة ما بيريد زكاتك ما بيريد فلوسك ما بيريد اي شيء ثاني يريد انه ياخذ قلبك يغير قلبك الحجري ويجعلك انسان يعطيك حياة جديدة الطريق الوحيد للجنة هو المسيح السيد المسيح هو الطريق الوحيد للجنة إذا بدك تعرف أكثر ممكن تتواصل معنا اسمح لي صلي لك وادعي لك بهاي الدقيقة وتعال إذا أنت بدك تعرف أكثر قل له يا رب أنا بيجي بسلمة قلبي وحياتي أنا بدي أعرفك رب ومخلص ومنجي أنا بطلبك أنه تغسل قلبي في دمك أنا بعرف أنه أنت هو الطريق الوحيد للجنة ممكن في كتير حقائق لا أعرفها عنك لكن اليوم أنا بدي إياك تفتح قلبي وتفتح عيوني حتى أعرفك رب ومخلص لحياتي في اسم سيدنا مولانا المسيح آمين آمين I love that <laughs> I can speak conversational Arabic but I can't be as fluent and as articulate as you can and I love that our God speaks every language and Amen. that his heart is to get the gospel message out in every language because i know that um in in uh, th that many muslims will say that the bible has you know has been corrupted or that there are uh you know, there are multiple versions and languages but it's the same message yes whether it's whatever language it's in whatever version it's in the language is still the same Amen. what do you what do you what do you say about that yeah you know uh, i heard that daily like the bible is corrupted the bible is not real and i just telling them one thing take the bible read it and show me what is the the not real in the bible you know 75 percent coming back and they say i love what i read i know this is something inside me you know i'm gonna share another story yes, about come on. Uh, about a 24 years old guy, he said like, your Bible is corrupted. I told him, my friend, take the Bible, read it and tell me what is the corrupted part in the Bible. You know, he had like a specific sin in his life. And he said, while I'm reading the Bible, I feel I'm guilty. 
Mm. And day by day I'm reading the Bible. I don't believe in the Bible, but I'm reading and I found like drawing me away from my sin. And one time I went by power to do that sin. I came back home. I feel I'm guilty. I bow down. I cry. Mm. And I read it again and again. And I just feel like there is a power in that Bible. Mm. There is a power in the Bible like taking me away from my sin. Mm. I want to repent and I want to believe in Jesus Christ mm. because I found him in the Bible. He's a Lord and Savior. This is mm. the Word of God. This is the living Word of God. Yes. And for me, like, Everyone told me that the Bible is corrupted. Just read it first. Yes. Just find what is inside the Bible because the same message of salvation yes. is still in the Bible. Yes. Even if we are in different languages, different yeah. versions for the Bible, but yeah. the message, the main message is still the main message. Yeah. So if anyone told you the Bible is corrupted, just give them the Bible. Ask them to read the Bible. Read the Bible with them. You can read it for them. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. so good. I love it. Well, and... And when you read the Bible, you know, don't read it with a preconceived notion, right? Yeah. Say, okay, I really, just like when you said to the Lord, you said, okay, I heard that you are, uh, you know, you're the living and true, God. and true God. And so you simply said, if you are with the, almost like a childlike faith, like a childlike yeah. approach, because the Bible says unto every man, and woman has been dealt a measure of faith. And so with a childlike faith, not with any, you know, preconceived notions, you just said, if you are, then show me. Yes. And and God revealed himself. And so mm. the same way that Nadala is saying, just read the Bible, just do it with no no preconceived ideas or notions and just say, and you can say, Holy Spirit, because we believe in a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes. And the Bible says it's the Holy Spirit that draws us. And so you can say, I'm going to read this Bible, and I just pray that the, that, that the Spirit of truth would, would reveal himself Amen. as I read the Word. And you said that the Bible is alive. Yes. And that's what I have found. It's not just some words on a page. Uh, because God himself is the Word. And he spoke the word and the world came into existence. Mm -hmm. And so when you read the Bible, life comes off of that page. And that's what causes the change. Yeah. Am I right? Yes, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in, the, in these last uh, couple, you know, like two minutes or so, tell us what you want us to know, whether it's about your, the ministry, whether, it, you know, um, it's about faith. What is it that you want to tell even the American church? I know you said shame on them a little earlier, but what do you want to tell our viewers? Yeah, I want to tell you, uh, my brothers and sisters, even if you are not a believer, I want to ask you first to ask the Holy Spirit of God to reveal to you, to show you the truth. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you to share the gospel because in your work, in your community, and everywhere, there is people who are non-believer. And for many years in the community, but maybe they're thinking about the gospel, what the people are doing in the church. I want to ask you just to start a salty speech with them. Share a little bit about Jesus Christ with them. Don't share the full gospel in five minutes. In two minutes, share a salty speech with them. <laughs> this is the first, th first thing I want you uh, to do. The second thing I want to share to pray for me and my wife. We have a vision to reach in the next 20 years, 36 millions in five different countries, radical countries. And we know we cannot do that without a prayer. So pray mm -hmm. for us. Amen. So uh, folks, I just wanna uh, say to you, I hope that you were uh, really encouraged by this. Such a powerful story. And you can learn more about Nadala by going to the Voice of Faith uh, website. And you can see, you know, he is, he is passionate for the things of the Lord. And I loved what he said about starting a salty conversation. Well, the Bible says that we are to be salt and we are to be light. And we are to influence the culture, not the culture to influence us. But most of all, when you listen to Nadella's story, you, uh, it's very evident that his life was transformed by the everlasting love of God. There was no one in the room that day when he cried out to God except for him 
and then Jesus walked in on the scene. So God is not a respecter of persons. If he will do that for Nadullah, he will also do that for you. So thank you for joining us and just remember that God loves you with an everlasting love. Not knowing what to say or how to say it After all the times I've tried I run away from me I run away from it But his amazing grace How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me His grace His mercy His kindness to me Amazing grace to say I say the wrong thing or I hide away in the silence of the day but he As a doe longs for a running stream, as a dove flies, so will I, and I'll fly, I'll fly from his amazing grace. Thank you.